Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Um, I just finished uh, doing some very heavy spell work for my clients, those that have reached out to me. We are working hard on your spell works. <laughs> I am sorry if you guys notice my energy a little bit um, a little bit low. Uh, working spell work is always uh, very draining. Um, I actually uh, grounded myself. I showered, cleansed myself. I was ready to just knock out you guys. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it has been extremely chaotic the past three months. You guys have no idea. Um, not complaining. I am blessed beyond measure and I hope you are too. Um, but the spirits just would not allow me to go to bed. They were like, nope, it's not time yet. And I really feel exhausted. Um, but it is full moon tonight. Uh, it is approximately 4.51 right now in the morning. Um, sorry if I'm rambling. Um, but they really wanted uh, for me to do a reading for all the signs uh, they want to communicate so what we're going to do is we're going to be pulling out one card for each sign and I'm going to channel the messages that are coming through um, this is not um, a general or a monthly reading this is just a reading that uh, I was told is important so take the messages for what they are I hope you're doing amazing. I, you're probably sleeping at this time, uh, depending on what part of the world you're in. Anyways, okay. So let's see what spirits have to say. What is this a full moon bringing? We're going to start off with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, the Ram. Spirits, what are the messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Okay, I'm going to try not to make these a video uh, so very long, um, but sometimes, as you guys know, if you guys have gotten uh, consultations with me, sometimes it could go a little bit longer than, <laughs> than planned. Okay, spirits, what are the messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are dealing well with these uh, crazy astrological alignments that we're currently going through a lot of uprising a lot of uh, very uh, confrontational destructive uh, type of energy that we're dealing with right now um, major transformations for sure so let's hope and uh, be positive put out into the universe we may not change situations, circumstances uh, that are outside of ourselves, but we can, however, change our perspectives. Oh, we have a card that flew out. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. The card we have here is Full Moon in Capricorn. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Now, I got this card in reverse so okay so it just flew out in reverse okay so we're going to take it for what it is all right Aries okay the end of a tough cycle approaches you guys have been having um, you've been challenged uh, you've been challenged for sure I think a lot of um, a lot of you guys may be experiencing changing profession for others of you finding other means to make money um, perhaps being a little bit more more open uh, to the possibilities I see you guys being a bit stubborn I think that's one of the lessons that they're trying to teach you money is energy okay money is energy and as an example, if you state that you want to grow or you want to advance or you want uh, to be secure in the job that you do, 
what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a box and you're not allowing yourself uh, to really raise to to your potential is what they're saying um, so I think that you may have experienced uh, I want to say the past month having opportunities or being able to make money on the side this is money that is not uh, coming directly from uh, the company or wherever it is that you work for uh, this is other avenues of abundance and what they're saying here with Capricorn Capricorn is the business sign it is the entrepreneur it's the boss so you have potential to create your own business. You have potential to um, bring about financial stability or even financial freedom. Um, and this is all coming from, uh, like I said, thinking outside the box or you know being open to receiving money from different avenues, not necessarily putting yourself in that box of, this is how I make money and this is the only possibility that I have to make money. So it's very important for the coming months for you to be very open-minded, Aries. Be very open-minded and really listen to your intuition. I feel that you're being guided. Uh, they're trying to teach you something. A lesson that has to do with finances is what they're saying. Um, so it could be a lesson in regards to are you putting yourself blockages? Are you putting yourself in a box? Are you... Um, you know, are you pushing yourself to the potential that you have? Or are you struggling? Are you struggling to uh, let go of certain beliefs or what was taught to you in early childhood? Um, are you fighting those changes? Because those changes are coming whether you're ready or not. Uh, but what they're saying here is one of the lessons is that is to you know be decisive in the decisions you make um indecisiveness could have been something that you've struggled with um and what they're saying here it's that it's very important to not resist the change be open to it and, and open your mind up to the possibilities of what can be um and this is not just with finances. This could be in every single aspect of your life. Uh, this could be in relationships. This could be in how you deal with other people. Um, so if you have been experiencing difficulties with finances or going from one job to another, you just don't feel comfortable. You feel like you can't grow within that company. Don't be scared of taking on uh, new opportunities or of putting yourself out there or finding a different job um, you are the one that's setting your own limits so that's something that is going to be very important and I feel that this full moon is definitely going to amplify that so for the coming month or the remaining of this month um, you may be challenged in in how you uh, you may be challenged in how you make money or in the belief that you have towards money. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to go now to Taurus. Let's see what spirit has for you guys. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is this full moon bringing to Taurus? What is the message you have for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this full moon? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay. Let's see. All right. Don't let pride get in your way. Full Moon in Leo. Okay. Don't let pride get in your way. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Leo is a fire energy. So it's a representation of self. And what they're saying here is that 
you may have been experiencing blockages in regards to how you approach people or your fear of finding out how they view you. Now, this could be in every single aspect of your life, Taurus. This could be family-wise. This could be relationships. This could be friends. This could be uh, business, finances, um, your peers. And what they're saying here is that you've let certain opportunities pass you by in the past. And it could have been uh, because of pride. But what they're telling me is that it has more to do with your fears. So it's not so much on a superficial level of pride itself. But what they're saying is that there is a fear in how the world views you or how the world is going to view you or people or those around you. So you've allowed certain opportunities to pass you by. This could be in relationships. This could be people that you were genuinely interested in. Um, but you didn't really feel like they were putting that effort. So you were like, okay, I'm just going to sit back and wait, you know, wait for them to either reach out or you didn't take the initiative is what they're saying. Um, now this could be in relationships in regards to commitment, marriage for some of you guys. There is something that you've wanted to manifest in your life and you haven't because you refuse to make changes it's almost like you're fearing happiness or being able to attain a manifestation. And it's because if I take this risk, if I take this opportunity, am I going to fail? Am I going to be judged? Am I going to be held, you know, be held to a certain standard that if I fail in this relationship, I'm going to look like a fool. Or if I fail in this business that I want to start, you know, and my family and friends find out about it and they see I don't succeed, what is that going to do to my ego? What is that going to do how they view me? Now, this can also be if you're married or in a committed relationship, this can also represent not speaking up or not standing up for yourself because you're scared, scared that you're either going to push the partner away or scared if you're in an unha unhappy marriage, you're scared of taking these steps to get out of that marriage or that commitment because everyone's going to judge you. See, the sun brings light or attention to something. Leo is a very confident, if, if they're vibrating to their highest frequency, it is a very uh, confident sign. So what, has, what have you gone through in life that has you questioning your worth? That has you questioning, am I pretty enough? Am I cute enough? Am I smart enough? Am I capable enough? You got to let go of those fears, Taurus. You got to take that plunge. You got to take that jump. You got to seize the moment is what they're saying. And like I said, this is in every single aspect of your life. Right now, at this very moment, what is holding you back? If you really think about it, it's probably something to do with what people are going to think, say, or how they're going to view you. What you must remember is that, as an example, if you meet a person that you find you're very connected to, um, and they're very receptive towards you, or they've shown some type of interest, do you create this persona, or do you create this image of how you want them to view you, so you don't really allow them to get to know you, like the real you? So they make decisions based off of how you've presented yourself. 
or do you play the role of um, standing by and being a bit standoffish because I want them to, you know, put effort when the other person may be feeling the same way? They got to prove to me. And if you're going about, they have to prove to me, well, you're both going to be standing there like idiots. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And it's not just in relationships. This is, as an example, business-wise, the company you work for. You need to take the initiative. You need to be more confident in yourself. You need to take your power back. All right, Taurus. All right, my lovelace. Let's see, who's next? Gemini. All right, let's see what spirits have for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What message do you have for them for this full moon, spirits? What messages do you have for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this full moon? Okay, I got two cards. Okay, I'm just going to take them. All right, so your first card here is Balance, Spirituality, and Practicality. And look at the bigger picture. All right. Full moon in Pisces and full moon in Sagittarius. Water and fire. Okay. Subconscious and action. All right. Let's see. For a lot of you Geminis, I feel that you're coming into this cycle where spirituality is something that your soul is needing for growth and development. Whether it be through, you know, spirituality, whether it be through seeking new religion or learning about new religion, uh, that type of energy. Now, they are telling me that the, uh, the subconscious and the action, somewhere in, beti in between, there's a blockage. So if you've been trying to manifest or if you've been trying to, uh, as an example, you've been working very hard towards becoming your own business, your own boss, uh, or you somehow are connected to spirituality and you've been wanting to grow or you've been wanting to advance at, from where you are right now to where you want to go, what they're telling you is that what your beliefs are at this very moment are not aligning to what you want to bring into your life. You see what I'm saying? So it's almost as if, as an example, if you want success and you want abundance, right? You want to be financially free. When I ask clients, are you scared of success or are you scared of, you know, being successful? Everyone is very quick to say, of course not. Don't be ridiculous, right? Everyone wants to advance in life. But it's not just on a conscious level. Are you on a subconscious level? Do you fear advancement? Now, that's a different question because it has a lot to do with the way you were raised, what you were taught in regards to money, what you were taught in regards to succeeding in life in order to, uh, you know, I don't know, start your own business, buy your first home, etc. Now, what they're saying here is the balance of spirituality and part, uh, practicality is all to do with the manifestation or the process of manifestation, right? Everyone's like wishful thinking, wishful thinking. I want this. I want that. Well, guess what? That's not going to make it happen. You have to take action, right? Once you get an idea of starting a business or doing your own thing or a new idea of making money, right? That's coming to consciousness, but after that is planning, it's taking action, it's taking those steps, even if they are the most smallest steps, you're taking or making action to get you to where you want to go. So once you have, it's basically like having uh, or starting to roll the, the ball, basically. You start to take 
or you start to make um, action. It starts to take, you know, traction on what you're wanting to do. So then you got the ball rolling. Somewhere along the lines, you're not either taking the initiative to make it happen or you're blocking yourself because you're procrastinating. And this is, like I said, in every single aspect of your life, this could be in relationships for some of you Geminis. You know, oh, I want, you know, the perfect man or I want the perfect woman. I want someone that's going to be loyal. I want someone that's going to respect my freedom. I want this. I want that, right? But then when a person presents themselves, because they're telling you here, you're not looking at the bigger picture. When you meet a person, you're like, well, you know, they're too short or they're too tall. You're already creating obstacles in your way without fully taking a step back and giving yourself the opportunity to connect with someone. You're not looking towards the future. You're thinking of the now. And what they're telling you is that what this full moon is bringing to you is the understanding. Sometimes you got to start small. You can't expect to become, uh, as an example, you can't expect to become, you know, a supervisor when you've never put in the work to be a supervisor. You cannot become a doctor without going through the transition of the learning process of the schooling and then the interning and all of that. Sometimes we are so you know, focused on what we want to bring to us. As an example, if you are musically inclined, you're like, well, you know, I want to be an artist. I want to be an artist. Are you doing yourself a favor and putting yourself out there, or putting your name out there? Rent is due, you know, in two weeks and you're sitting there in the couch waiting for someone to call you to give you an opportunity to become the artist that you're wanting. It doesn't work that way. The intention of manifesting something in your life has nothing to do where, with where you're at right now. Don't expect to be in point A and go from point A all the, po all the way to point Z. You got to take those steps. It doesn't diminish your dream. It doesn't diminish what you're wanting to bring to you, but you got to work to get there. So what they're telling you here is you need to balance what is feasible in your mind to bring into your life, right? And then take action to make it happen. Look at the bigger picture. It's almost to me what I'm sensing is like, as an example, if I want to be an actress, just, you know, as an example, I want to be an actress. My rent is due in two weeks. I'm offered a job. It's not an acting job, but it's as an example, a janitorial, a janitorial position or somewhere where I get to work in a theater or something that is close to what I want, but it's not that position I'm looking for. Well, if you got to pay your dues, take that job. Don't be negative because you're not looking at the bigger picture. You're going to be rubbing shoulders with people that are in that industry. Take and seize that opportunity. I hope that makes sense. And that's in every single aspect of your life, Gemini. This could be in relationships too. You have to align yourself is what they're saying. And for this month, 
It is going to be imperative for you to start taking action towards bringing to you what you want. All right, I hope that makes sense. Let's go to, okay, that was Gemini. Okay, so we're gonna do Cancer. Spirits, what is the message that you have for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this full moon? What is this full moon bringing or wanting to teach? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirits, what are the messages for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Okay, one more time. All right. Take time to breathe it out. disseminating moon okay when looking at this I feel overwhelmed I feel like you guys are very much in your head I feel like you guys are feeling restless or worried Okay. Take time to breathe it out. What's got you anxious, Cancer? I see confusion. I see confusion for you guys. I'm not sure what you guys are going through, but what they're telling me is that there's answers that you're seeking. There's signs that you're looking for. Could be something that you've been praying on or meditating on. What doesn't seem clear right now, the full moon is going to be bringing light to that situation. If you guys have had, you know, misunderstandings with someone or if there's been some ending of communication with someone that you held either very dear or they played a very important role in your life, what they're saying is what seems very distant will soon present itself to you or will soon give you the opportunity to see more clearly or to speak more clearly, more freely, is what they're saying. I see you guys have a lot of, there's a lot of things that you guys want to accomplish or that you want to, goals that you want to achieve. But I think that you guys are having difficulty because there is a lot of things that are happening around you, not necessarily to you, although it can be that way. But I feel that there's like more of outside resistance where a lot of things are going on that you are your perception of the situation has more to do because of because of the environment that you're in right now. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of like you are attaching yourself to that of, you know, when they say you are a product of your own environment. I think that that's really what's going on right now. And it's not so much about like your upbringing. It has more to do with as an example, if you're seeking to grow your career or to take it to the next level, or if you're working really hard towards something, it almost seems like things keep coming up that distract you from that. Because I feel like I'm being pulled towards different directions. 
And what they're telling you is don't lose focus, Cancer. Don't lose focus on what you're wanting to achieve. Don't lose focus on what you're wanting to make happen in your life. Yes, sometimes, you know, obviously in the now, when we are, you know, we have to deal with the now, what's going on right now, uh, with the responsibilities that come with that. But don't attach yourself so much to what's going on right now. Take some time to either practice visualization exercises or practice uh, putting effort and energy towards what you're wanting to achieve, what you're wanting to accomplish, especially those of you guys that are trying to either grow um, grow or get a business off the ground. What they're saying is stay focused on what you're trying to achieve. Don't let outside interference or outside uh, even people around you discourage you. Don't allow other people's experiences affect you in what you're wanting to do or in the pursuit that you're in. And this is in regards to relationships, as an example. If you're remaining hopeful and you're saying, you know, soon I'm going to find the person that's right for me and your friends are like, girl or boy, you're crazy, um, you know, that's never going to happen. You're kind of fantasizing, etc., etc. Or if you're trying to start your own business and people are telling you you're crazy, you can't do it. Or they're telling you, you know, oh, that's a dream, you know. You got to pay the bills. You got to focus on that. Don't allow outside people around you affect the dreams and desires that you're wanting to achieve in life. Remain focused. Again, what seems far or what seems unattainable will soon present itself to you or will soon bring to you an opportunity that is going to get you to where you want to go. But hold on for dear life on being positive and stop doubting yourself so much, Cancer. You got to let go of the fear. All right. All right, my lovelies. Let's see what Cancer's message. Uh, sorry, not Cancer. Leo, <laughs> I just did Cancer. All right, let's see. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirits, what are the messages for Leos for this full moon? What are the messages for Leos for this full moon? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the message for Leos? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. On this full moon. Okay. Adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. Okay. Okay, adjustments are required. All right, Leo. What they're saying here is that a lot of you Leos have been going through a situation where you feel that you've lost all hope, whether it's in relationships, whether it's the working environment, whether it's dealing with family or people around you. I feel like you've been let down in the past and you're very guarded. But they're also saying here that it's important to remain optimistic in life. Stop putting so much focus or energy towards the things that are not going good in your life. If you guys are dealing with a situation at work where you feel like other people are taking advantage of your hard work or your uh, ethic, 
uh, if you feel like people are solely depending on you to pick up the slack of other people, uh, that type of energy, and you literally drag your feet to work, or you feel like you've been taken for granted at work, and you're just, you just don't want, it's almost like you guys are really complaining before you get to work. <laughs> what they're saying here is, change you way the way you think adjustments are needed they're required if there is this co-worker that is just a pain in the ass and they're always complaining about you know how hard work is when you know they're slack offs they're not like th you could not depend on them they're lazy And you feel like every time you go to work, you don't want to go to work because this individual, you're going to have to deal with them. Focus your energy on something else. Focus your energy towards what's going good at work. If you're in a relationship where you feel like there's certain things that are being kept in the hidden from you, or you yourself are not even... A, like fully fully decided what it is that you want in this relationship take your time in getting to know that person or take your time in trying to deliberate if you want to continue the relationship or not or if you want to take it to the next level or not if you're in an unhappy marriage or in a committed relationship where things are not going exactly the way you would want them to, what is it that you're doing to try to balance that? What is it that you're doing to try to change what's happening? And if you often find yourself being the one that has to do those adjustments, then it's time you take a step back. It's time to you, for you to take a step back and allow them to step up. And if they don't, then you already know who's putting the effort and energy on keeping the relationship together. And we all know partnerships, it's between two people, not just one. You can't carry a relationship by yourself, Leo. Are you the one that's sacrificing? You got to change that. There are certain behaviors about you guys that this full moon is going to be highlighting. Balance is necessary. If it's in relationships, it could be the balance of exchange of power. Do you always have to be in control? Or... Are you too loving and committed to your partner that you allow them to take the lead all the time? There has to be a balance. At work, if you're being overworked, if you're t being taken for granted, not being appreciated, speak up. Take some time off. Get some vacation time. Let them miss you. Let them see what it's like without you being there. But there has to be some changes. All right, my lovelies. I said I wasn't going to take very long but there's some specific signs that need more of the whip <laughs> all right that was leo let's see virgo sun moon rising venus spirits what are the messages for virgos what is the message for virgo for this full moon Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
What is the message for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this full moon? Spirits. Okay. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. Okay. Virgos. Love is definitely around you. Okay. What they're saying here is that what this full moon is going to be highlighting is relationships. And this is not just in partnerships or love relationships. Uh, this could be partnerships. This could be uh, the people you work with. This could be friends. This could be family members. What they're saying is for those of you guys that are single, stop complaining about being single. Stop complaining about being single. Stop talking about how much you hate to be single. Stop complaining about how difficult it is to meet someone that you connect with. You have to embrace love in order to get love. You have to give love in order to receive love. It's a mirror effect. If you complain a lot about being single, then you shall remain single. You can tell me, well, Pinky, I don't have anyone. <laughs> Focus on what you want to bring to you. Focus on how exciting it's going to be to meet someone that you can genuinely connect with. Focus on how your life is going to change, being able to have a partnership in a loving embrace. There's changes that are going to need to happen. It's not the same thing being single, being able to just get your keys and go on a road trip than to be dealing with someone when you're in a relationship. It's not the same freedom. Not the same freedom. Unless you're dating me, then I'm expecting complete freedom. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. What they're saying is you need to embrace love. You need to approach situations with love. You may find yourself being very temperamental. You may find yourself being agitated or aggravated very quickly. They're telling you take a step back, take a deep breath, approach the situation in a loving embrace. You're dealing with a neighbor that is just a headache. Be patient with them. You don't know their struggles. You don't know what they're going through. Your father or your mother are being very harsh on you. Be patient with them. You don't know what they're going through or what they've been through. Teach others how you want to be treated by treating them that way. For those of you guys that are in a committed or partnership, marriage. Open communication. Speak freely. Don't fear holding back because you're going to make them feel, you know, some type of way. Or you're going to make them feel, you know, upset. If you feel like you got to speak up, speak up. But try to do it in a loving embrace, in a loving way. Don't be cynical. They're saying there's a lot of possibilities for those of you guys that are single. A lot of possibilities. You may experience that this coming uh, or this passing full moon uh, going into the new moon. You're going to find um, you're going to be attracting a lot of people, a lot of people getting or giving you attention. Uh, 
All right, my lovelies. Let's go to Libra. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Spirits, what are the messages or what is the message you want to convey to Libra? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus for this full moon. Libra, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Libra, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Okay. Oh. Hold your vision. Fixed moon. Okay. Remain optimistic, Libra. Focus and determination is going to give you results. Sorry, you guys, you guys heard that in the background. <laughs> That's probably my saint. Okay. I feel that for some of you guys, you guys are missing or thinking of someone. Um, someone that constantly crosses your mind. Uh, someone, I feel that this is, for some of you guys, this could be love from a distance. This could be a person that is no longer present in your life. Um, but deep down in your heart, for some of you guys, I feel that you, you know that either it's not done, it's not over, or that destiny is at play. And what they're telling you is if you feel that to the core of your bones, then this is spirit letting you know that it's not done. There's some type of karmic connection here. And they're saying karmic as in past lives, but they're also speaking about a soulmate type of connection. Now, for others of you, they're saying that there is a connection that either recently happened or will happen after this full moon with a person that you have. Like I said, there's a karmic connection there. There's a soulmate type of energy. This person is very intriguing to you. This person is very... If this is a person from your past, I feel that you've never felt loved or understood the way they made you feel. And if this is someone new, I feel that for some of you guys, it's almost like you've never felt seen or heard the way they make you feel. This is heavy. Um heavy energy you guys this is speaking directly about soul connections for some of you guys you've had uh, very bad luck in relationships and there's so there's what they're saying is that there's there's something connected to your karma that you're currently or have been going through um that has to do directly with your karma, with past lives. There's a lesson there that needs to be learned. It could have been, um, for some of you guys, it could be that you've gone through multiple relationships and you just haven't found the one. Uh, for others of you, it could be that you feel like you've lost the one. But it's because your soul is currently working through some karma, some heavy karma, you guys. But what they're telling you is hold your vision. If you're being pulled to wait, if you feel that for some reason you, if this is a person from the past and you feel like you're still connected to them, you probably are and they're probably still not over you either. If this is a new connection, they're definitely feeling your energy.
what is it that you've t that you've learned in past relationships are you too idealistic have you had trouble finding a person that is able to love you the way you need to be loved because that's what they're telling me some of your karma that is currently working itself has a lot to do with feeling like you're not understood or you're not supported. And what they're telling me is not that they haven't loved you in the past or that they haven't treated you well. They, your language and their language is just very different when it comes to love. And I'm talking about the people from your past. I'm not talking about that one connection if you know what they're talking about. Because they're saying specifically a person. Now, this is a general reading. So it could be, um, for some of you guys, it could be a person from the past. While for others, it could be someone you recently met. <clears throat> Internalize. What are the lessons you've learned in past relationships? Yeah, there's a lot of karma that you guys are currently working through. For some of you guys, this is not necessarily love or romance. This could be directly connected to family. Uh, this could be dealing with situations where you're fed up or you're tired of dealing with the same thing over and over. Uh, but you just have difficulty walking away or pulling away or distancing yourself from certain relatives because there's certain type of karma that needs to be worked out there. All right, my lovelies. All right, let's go to Scorpio. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, I was going to move on to the next to the next sign. For Libras, what they're saying is if you feel that you're still connected, emotionally connected to someone from the past and you feel like it's like it's not done or there's some unresolved issues or unresolved communication that needs to happen that's quickly going to be happening for you guys and i think that as we approach the end of this year for a lot of you guys it can happen in different time frames but i feel that for some of you guys this full moon really amplified that uh it could be that when you're watching this year you know you were missing just a couple of hours ago or a couple of days ago that specific person and what they're telling you is hold on to that because it's not done it's not fully resolved there's th there's still some uh some things that need to be worked out in that relationship or in that connection okay all right okay scorpio sun moon rising venus spirits what are the messages for scorpio sun moon rising venus what is this full moon bringing to them what is the message that you want to convey for Scorpios? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpios. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm going to try to put the timestamps in the bottom of this video, I hope. If I'm not too tired. Um, if I don't, whoever watches the video to its completion, if you can do that for me, I appreciate that. All right, my love lace. Hmm, interesting. Scorpio, you have the end of tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Capricorn. Second time we get this card. Okay. I think this was Aries card as well, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Scorpio, the end of a tough cycle approaches. Yeah, I feel that you guys have been challenged this year um, in regards to your finances. For some of you guys, it could have been like a roller coaster where things were going extremely well at work. Uh, then it would, you know, die down and then it would go up again and then it would die down again. 
Uh, for others of you, it could be that you are in the cusp of making a transition. It could be from going from one position to another. For others of you, it could just mean that you've kind of, you know, gone through multiple jobs. Uh, and there's some type of fears connected to financial stability. But what they're telling me here, you guys, for th this is very strong that's coming through. What they're saying is for you Scorpios, and I, and I want to say, I want to say, um, okay, so what they're saying is, um, there's definitely going to be major transitions happening with you guys in regards to your finances. Um, for those of you guys that are in the process or have been thinking or have been wanting to attain property, uh, whether it be buying a home, whether it's uh, buying, uh, buying a, uh, what is it called, um, cars, anything like that, um, material. Uh, what they're saying is that's definitely going to be manifesting for you guys. For some of you guys, it could be through the transition of Capricorn. So it could be um, from December the 22nd all the way to January 19th. Although for some, it could be from now starting October all the way to uh, January that there is, you know, uh, there's some type of movement in regards to either uh, purchasing a home, purchasing a vehicle, uh, purchasing, you know, land, property. Um, I feel that you guys are coming into your own Scorpio when it comes to finances. If you've been struggling in regards to finances, you're going to be hit hard in a positive way. <laughs> uh, there's going to be major opportunities in regards to finances, in regards to starting your own business, in regards to getting a business off the ground. Uh, what they're saying is that the difficult times are, you've already gone through the difficult times is what they're saying. And there is a momentum of major opportunities and growth and success for some of you guys even um they're showing me here uh, almost like uh, you know capricorn is the entrepreneur it's all to do with business it's all to do with you know wanting to achieve wanting to go up the ladder but at the same time they're they're really amplifying here uh it's almost like i'm seeing the sun so it's a representation of being highlighted your finances being highlighted this can also represent attention for those of you guys that are in the public eye, it can represent um, notoriety. So for a lot of you guys, um, you're going to start to notice, you know, your business pick up. You're going to start to notice that people are more receptive at work. If you're in sales, you're going to be selling like crazy. Uh, there's major momentum in regards to your finances, but they are saying property is something that uh, you are either going to be looking into or you will be purchasing or you should be looking into and want to purchase. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Okay. Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Spirits, what is the message that you have for Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, Venus for this full moon? I'm sorry, you guys, if I sound a, a little bit raspier than usual with my voice. It's been a very, very long day. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the message you want to convey? Okay, one more. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay. Believe in the impossible. Blue moon. Beautiful. Sagittarius. I think you guys have been having, like since last year, very difficult readings. Um, and I have seen like the energy shift. I have seen through the readings that we've been doing like on monthly basis and with love there's, there's this shift happening with you guys. And what they're telling you here is believe in the impossible. 
So what they're saying is have more faith in yourself. There's a higher purpose for you, Sagittarius. You guys have been working through very, very heavy karmic energy the past three years, probably more for some. And what they're saying is that you're quickly coming out of that to be able to experience almost like a rebirth. There is this transformational type of energy. There's this re. I don't know how to, this um, renovation that's happening with you internally. And this has all to do with, with your beliefs. This has all to do with what you feel you deserve. Have more confidence in yourself, Sagittarius. There is blessings that are coming your way. For some of you guys... If you've been, you know, on this journey of being with one, like from one relationship to another, and you often feel or end up feeling like they, they just can't reciprocate or they can't love you the way you deserve to be loved, that's quickly going to be changing, my love. There's new momentum for you guys in regards to love. There's major momentum in regards to your finances. There is bountiful blessings that are coming your way and they're going to be coming unexpectedly for you. Now, when I hear unexpected, uh, this could represent that you meet a person very randomly and the fireworks just go off. It could be that, you know, on a Saturday night, you're bored. <laughs> And you just decide to go online dating or something, trying it out, you know, and you actually meet someone. It could be that you ran out of milk and you have to make a quick run to the store and boom, you meet a person. They're saying love and prospects are out there. Okay, now I know we're being safe and being in quarantine. Um, or should be anyways, but they're definitely saying for a lot of you guys, you're this new or not new moon, sorry, this full moon is going to be bringing to you guys a lot of hitting blessings and unexpected connections, unexpected partnerships. Even for those of you guys that are clearly just coming out of a relationship, it could be that you've been going through a very tumultuous, very chaotic toxic relationships in the past and you finally get the guts to walk away from that and boom you meet the person that's going to be your life partner believe in yourself believe that you will be happy in this life believe that you will succeed believe that you will be financially stable Believe in the good that this world has to offer. Yes, you've been tested. Yes, you've been through difficult situations. You've worked through a lot of karmic baggage. But it doesn't mean that you're not destined for happiness. It doesn't mean that you're not destined for true love. It doesn't mean that you're not destined to not have hardships when it comes to finances. But you have to accept it. You have to declare it. You have to state it. You have to believe it. Lovely, lovely of reading. All right, my lovelies. Let's get to Capricorn. Spirits, what are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? What is this full moon bringing to them? What is it that you want to convey for them? Spirits, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. 
Capricorn, Sun, Rising, and Venus. Okay, one more. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay. You are good enough. Full Moon and Virgo. Trust your intuition, Capricorn. Your intuition is going to be your BFF for the coming two, three months. Your intuition is going to be right on point. Pay attention to that, but learn to differentiate intuition and ego. Don't let ego get in the way of relationships, of friends of connections with your partner and know you are good enough. If you're dealing or being in a situation where you're dealing with a toxic relationship and toxic relationship doesn't have to be that you're in a relationship now. For some of you guys, it could be an ex that you're dealing with that is just very toxic, likes to steer up shit, create drama, put the line on the sand, let it go Capricorn, detach yourself from anything that is no longer serving you. If you keep breaking up and going back, breaking up and going back, breaking up and going back. You're good enough. You deserve to be treated better than that. Now, if this is you doing shit you're not supposed to, oh, they're good enough. And they are going to get tired of your shit. But I feel that for the majority of you guys, you've been tested. These past couple of years, you've been tested. You've gone through things that perhaps you had never gone through in the past, but it was necessary. It was necessary because it needed to humble you. It was necessary because it needed to teach you the lessons that you refuse to learn on your own. But now that you're coming out of that, don't let that hinder your confidence in yourself. Don't let that, you know, make you feel like you can't go back to being the confident, the authoritative, the charismatic Capricorn you've always been. You still have that in you, but you got to believe in yourself. You got to know it. Stop settling or dealing with people that are toxic, that are not helping you grow. They're not helping you become a better person. They're not doing anything for you other than taking, taking, taking. Put your foot down. Remember I told you guys in the beginning of the year that for Capricorns, it was almost going to be like a selfish, like think of yourself first or learn to put yourself first. Yeah, this is the vibe I'm getting you guys. It's like we are taught or trained that selfishness is a bad thing, but sometimes it's necessary. Why? Because you got a Capricorn self-sacrificing himself or herself 
to make someone happy, but then they're left feeling unhappy, unfulfilled, restricted. You got to learn when to let go, Capricorn, and this full moon is going to amplify that. Attachments. And y'all have a tendency of attaching yourselves to the past a little too much. And that's what this full moon is going to be highlighting. You have to learn to let go. To know when to walk away. To know when to put your foot down and say enough is enough. I'm not going to let you walk all over me. Enough is enough. If you're not putting effort in this relationship, then I am not either. And let that shit burn. All right, my lovelies. Wow, that was pretty strong. <laughs> All right, let's go to Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirits, what are the messages for Aquarius? What is the message you want to convey to Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus on this full moon? Spirits. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. Confidence is your key to success. New moon and Leo, rare. Okay. Aquarius. I started to see a lot of you Aquarians in your readings. You, there's a lot of things that are changing that are going on with you guys. Uh, your views, you know, certain perspectives about life and where you want life to go. And all of this is really like, it's changing for you guys. And I think that you're coming into, uh, for some of you guys, you're coming into your second, you know, your second, um, life, go at life, you know, you're coming into the next phase in your life where you're more matured. You're more wiser. Believe in yourself, Aquarius, is what they're saying. Okay. For some of you guys, if this is in regards to relationships, there's a person, uh, a person that almost, you feel like almost eclipses your energy. It could be a person that... Uh, could be in the public eye. It could be a person that gets a lot of attention. It could be a person that is um, very attractive and you feel like they kind of intimidate you for sure. But what they're saying is believe in yourself, have confidence in yourself. And I feel that if it's a person that you already know, if it's not someone that you're, that you're going to be coming into, once this full moon passes or even through this full moon. For some of you guys or the majority, you're already dealing with this person. I'll tell you what. This person is feeling you as well. There's something odd or eccentric about you or them that brings you guys to like magnets. But I feel that you kind of try to shy away from it and it could be because of intimidation. It could be because you feel like this person is, you know, uh, there's, there's no, no chance that they would get with me or there's no uh, way that they would be interested in me or anything like that. It's a lot of negative self-talk that you do with yourself, rambling. Um, but I feel that the passion and the connection could be very strong. Either this person is oblivious to the fact that you're very interested in them or It could be that they're very focused in their career at this moment, that they don't necessarily pay a lot of attention to like their romance or love life, but there's definitely a connection there. 
And they're telling you here, confidence is your success or key to success. Don't be intimidated. Go for it. Put yourself out there. Let them know you're interested. Be blunt. Give yourself the opportunity for love. Now, for those of you guys that are dealing with either uh, a work situation where you feel like uh, there is someone that perhaps is overshadowing you or someone that intimidates you. It could be a supervisor. It could be uh, the boss. It could be believe in yourself. You're more than capable, Aquarius. You're more than capable. Outshine the shit out of your boss. Like, don't be scared to take the initiative or to take the lead. Like, go for it. Let yourself shine. Let the spotlight be on you. This is going to bring to you a lot of opportunities. It's going to open up a lot of doors for you. It's going to, for some of you guys, it's going to change your life. Be bold. Don't let, don't let people intimidate you or situations intimidate you. Be fierce when it comes to, when it comes to going after what you want. It's time to shake it up, Aquarius. It's time to be bold. It's time to be decisive. It's time to go after what you want with this fearness, with this confidence, with your animalistic instincts. Let that shit roar. <laughs> you got this. But you got to believe in yourself. All right. All right, my lovelies. We've got into our finale Pisces Sun Moon Rising and Venus the last one because you're special Pisces all right let's see what spirit has for Pisces Sun Moon Rising and Venus spirits what are the messages for Pisces Sun Moon Rising Venus on this full moon, what is the messages you want to convey? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Whoops. Okay. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. Show the world the real you. Full moon in Aquarius. What do you fear, Pisces? What do you fear? I feel that for the majority of you, you've gone through life shying away from embracing your true nature. Now, this could be in different aspects of your life. This could be in regards to relationships, uh, to business, to finances, to people around you, family, relatives. I feel that you guys are coming into your own, owning who you really are, your authentic self. For a lot of you guys, healing has been excruciating is what they're saying. 
And it could be that you're either working through healing energy where you were at a point where you lacked confidence, you lacked belief or trust in yourself, or even self-doubted yourself or doubted your intuition. But what they're saying is that you're going into this, it's, it's almost like they're showing me like the snake and shedding the skin. And to me, that's a representation of taking all the good and all the bad that we've experienced in life and coming into another phase of your life where you're wiser, you're more knowledgeable. You're getting to the point of saying, you know, if, if there were some type of insecurities about yourself, you're getting to the point of saying, you know what, fuck it. If I'm weird, I'm going to embrace my weirdness. If I'm tall, I'm going to embrace my tallness. If I'm short, I'm going to embrace my shortness. If I'm skinny, I'm going to embrace being skinny. If I'm thick, I'm going to embrace being thick. If I'm big, I'm going to embrace the beauty of who I am. And it's like, I feel that you guys are finally coming into this place where you're comfortable in your own skin and you're owning the shit out of that. And that's what this full moon is going to be highlighting for you guys. It's really tapping into those insecurities, but almost like as a self-awareness that you come to terms of understanding that's what makes you unique and you're embracing the shit out of that. Now, this could be a transition where you're still going through that, but what they're telling you is show the world who you are. If you're different, embrace that. That's what separates you from the rest. You're no longer hiding. I feel that you're going to be much more straightforward. For some of you guys... Uh, for some Pisces, it's been difficult to be able to express yourself or what you really want in a relationship or with the partner or with the people around you or even, you know, colleagues, people that you surround yourself with. I feel that coming into this full moon, going into the new moon, you're going to be embracing being more vocal about what you want and what you don't want. It's like you're no longer biting your tongue. You're no longer holding back because you don't want to create insecurity issues with your boyfriend, with your husband, with your girlfriend, with your wife. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to say what I need to say. If I've been dating this person for two years and they haven't committed to me, I'm going to start bringing that shit up. I'm not wasting my precious time sitting here waiting for someone to decide if they want to marry me or not. If I'm unhappy and the partner starts, you know, uh, complaining or bickering with me, you know what? I've done this. I've done that. And what have you done? Are you trying to change the situation? Because if you're not, this is what I've done. But it's not in a way of being vengeful. It's not in a way of throwing it in their faces. It's so that they can acknowledge and see where the sacrifices have been and that you're no longer going to sacrifice yourself or your happiness. You're coming into your own Pisces is what they're saying. Own it. Own it. Now, they're also telling me, for those of you guys that are single out there, y'all are going to be so wanted. <laughs> People are going to be reaching out, wanting to contact you, wanting to get to know you. 
telling a friend, hey, I'm interested, you should get me their number. You're coming into your own. Embrace that. All right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings, these messages. Um, I tried to make it not as long as possible, but obviously that's impossible for me. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, comment, let me know what you guys think, and we'll see each other soon. I wish you guys the very best. Blessings to all of you. I love you guys, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.